Music City always has plenty on its mind. Lots of tableau in the Big Apple. But the Mets are top of mind from the village to Flushing. Seven trains get awfully crowded early in the season as the Mets are scoring some runs. 19 of the last three games, five straight wins, and they try and keep it going tonight. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Miami Marlins Friday Night Baseball presented by Jeep. Have a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight. It's Purple Tie Night at City Field as the Mets take on the Miami Marlins. Mets have won five straight games, and they're off to a 7-3 and three start, which is great. You always want to get to off, off to a hot start, but maybe this year more than most because the Mets are playing so many games in their own division early in the season. Well, we talked about it in spring training, how important this April was going to be for that skipper right there kind of a, a, a hot seat kind of a year their first 16 games against division a little break with a three game series at Yankee Stadium and then seven more games in division so it was important to get off to a good start why this team's kind of coming together right now I can sense Gary a feeling that they belong and here you are up against they've seen all their division foes now now granted they caught the Nationals with three of their main players hurt, but they went up there and they beat them on the road, two out of three. So this is all confidence builders. They all add up in the end. So these games in April are really, even though people kind of say, okay, it's early in the year, they're just as important as the games in August and September. Yeah, it's been a pretty good measuring stick for the Mets so far. One guy who's been right at the top is Bartolo Colon. He was the opening day starter. He's already got two wins under his belt, and he goes for number three tonight. Well, first start at home, Bartolo, his first two wins and his first two starts on the road last year had 15 starts with seven and eight here at city field all uh, decisions he got decisions in all 15 starts he's extraordinary 41 years old you see him right there he can go nine he won 15 games last year this young staff he led it in in wins he's going for number three and with Henderson Alvarez, the Marlins opening day starter on the disabled list, the former Yankee David Phelps steps into the rotation tonight. Third appearance for Phelps, uh, two relief appearances, was not put, uh, supposed to be starting, uh, but as Gary said, with the injuries to two of their starters now, this is his first start. Hasn't pitched in a week. He's only had one start against the Mets in his career. That was last year. He started and took a loss. So he's looking to get it going here. He got racked up his last time out. Uh, gave up four runs in his last outing in relief at Tampa Bay. Mets got the opening game of the series last night. They've got Cologne tonight to Grom and Harvey the next two days against Miami. It's the Mets and Marlins. All the action coming your way tonight right here on SNY.
percent or more on car insurance visit geico.com for a free rate quote by bob's discount furniture quality choice and untouchable value every day by cadillac by Hospital for Special Surgery, the official hospital of the New York Mets. And by DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the New York Mets. Who are the four players who best represent the history of the Mets? And who are the four greatest Major League Baseball players? Go to MLB.com backslash franchise four to cast your ballots. Winners will be revealed during the All-Star Game July 14th. It's like a forward slash on the graphic there. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Get to City Field tomorrow night for fireworks night following the Mets game against the Marlins at 710. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash fireworks. Mets hoping for some more fireworks tonight as they go for their sixth straight win. Bartolo Colon making his way in. Even giving the cameraman a fist bump. He never gets rattled, does he? Both on the road in Washington and Atlanta, so he makes his 2015 City Field debut. So he already fist bumped the cameraman now, handshaking the security guard, big smile on his face, having fun wherever he goes. He's been around a long time. This is old hat to him. Hyundai starting lineup for the Marlins, one change tonight. Ichiro Suzuki, who had a big pinch hit triple last night, gets a start in center field. He's known more as a right fielder, but one of his 10 gold gloves he won as a full time center fielder in Seattle. JT Realmuto makes his third straight start. Looks like Jared Saltalamaki has been relegated to backup status, at least for the moment. D. Gordon will lead things off against Cologne. Well, Bartolo, I mentioned that he had 15 starts, and that's your Jeep numbers for Bartolo in this young season. Off to a great start. Both wins on the road. Tip of the hat. Six strong innings opening day in Washington. Seven good innings against Atlanta on Sunday. And a first pitch strike to D. Gordon. And we're underway. Gordon won for four last night. Hitting 366. Right now seventh in the National League in batting. Gordon, Yelich, and Stanton for the Marlins. 
who scored a first in, uh, two first inning runs last night on Stanton's home run. In fact, the Mets have given up first inning runs in each of the last three games and have rebounded to win all three. Corners in against the tremendous speed of Gordon, who led the National League in steals last year. And he slaps one foul, and it's one and two. Slender guy. There's a very up and coming budding star. Already had himself a fine season last year, Christian Yelich in the on deck circle. Blown ahead of the leadoff hitter, one and two. And he goes away with the fastball, two and two. Bart is usually, and we say that affectionately, Bartolo, uh, usually when he has a bad outing, it happens quick. You find out right away if he's got it or not. He is usually so precise. And he catches the inside corner with that two seamer. D. Gordon begs to differ with Lance Barksdale, and that's how this night begins. Well, there's that little fastball. He just kind of starts it inside off the plate, freezes, watch the, hit, the hitter freeze. And he comes back over on the inside corner. It's a very good pitch. So Cologne, who struck out 13 in his first 13 innings, has a strikeout to begin this night. And now Christian Yelich, one for four last night, hitting a 258. And he thinks about a bunt with Campbell playing back at third. Ball one. Campbell made all the plays uh, last night at third base. He had around, let's say, around four chances, filled with them all beautifully. There he is. Starting his third straight game, filling in for David Wright at third base. Murphy right in front of the grounder by Yelich and quickly Cologne has two out. That'll bring up John Carlos Stanton. Let's take a look at his night last night. Well, he had a good night. There's his first at bat. Look at that. You know, he said he's a high ball hitter. That's belt high out over the plate. Goodbye. That's where you got to pitch him, and that's a pitcher's pitch right there. Good sinker down and in called third strike. And then a hanging slider up. And you just got to keep the ball down. Look at that. Hardly any backswing. And he's so strong. Also had a walk last night, so he was two for three. Homer double walk. Just starting to get going the last few days. His homer last night was his first of the year. He got hit in the face last year towards the end of the year. Slams one down the right field line, and that'll slice away and go foul. Uh, face into the Pepsi porch. And we'll take a quick look at the Mets uh, Lexus defense. And this is your outfield. The gold glover. Ligaris got received his gold glove. Flores a three run shot last night. To bring to get the Mets back in the ball game and record with his second start of the season behind the plate. Alone ahead on Stanton 0 2. In the air, right center field. Lagares back to the warning track, back at the wall, leaping. He can't get it. Home run. The fifth straight game that Stanton has homered against the Mets. Only the third player in history to hit a home run in five straight games against the Mets. Joins Henry Aaron and Ryan Howard. And again, he's given the Marlins the early lead, his second home run of the year. Wow. I just don't understand. You. This is out on the outer half up again more up than Dylan's uh, pitch last night. But to me the big strong guys you've got to crowd them. You, you do not want them to be able to extend their arms completely like that. And for someone that strong you see, he hasn't got a big backswing there at all. And still hits it a mile. That's a home run that would not have been last year here at City Field. Took advantage of the shorter dimensions in right center. Oh, Martin Prado takes a strike. Double edged sword. Well, especially when you've got a gold glove center fielder, it's that much less room that Ligaris has to patrol. Instead, Stanton has a home run to give the Marlins the early lead. Prado breaks his bat. Nice. One hopper to Campbell. Side retired. So Campbell takes care of that one. But Stanton homering in the first inning for the second straight day.
quickly behind on a Stanton home run again tonight. Here's the Mets starting lineup tonight. Brought to you by Geico. Juan Lagares hits second for the 27th time in his career. Lucas Duda, if he were to get two extra base hits tonight, would be the first Met ever to do that in four straight games. Anthony Wrecker, a start behind the plate so that Darno can catch DeGrom and Harvey the next two days. Well, the Yankee traded over late, came over from the Yanks in that trade with uh, Martin Prado, who was playing third base, and now thrust because of injury into the starting role. With the trade that sent Nate Valdi to the Yankees. Granderson leads off, and he takes inside for ball one. Granderson's been getting on base without getting many hits, just five for 30 to start the year, but even with that, has a 390 on base percentage because of 11 walks. Pops one up outside third. Prado near the stands. Mm. Yeah, not quite. Tough chance. Echevarria, the shortstop, it was playing way up the middle, as we saw last night. And really, that's a shortstop's ball, but the fact that Echevarria is playing pretty much on the outs outfield fringe and up the middle, just to the left side of second base, it's too far for him to get there. Balls in that area of any field will always cause comparisons with the heroics of Nolan Arenado <laughs> earlier this week. <laughs> Anderson takes a fastball just off the plate from Phelps and it's two and one. Juan Lagares on deck hitting second tonight. Lucas Duda behind him. Granderson was 0 for 3 in a walk last night and he socks this one in the air left center field. Closing on the ball, Ichiro with Yelich, and Ichiro takes charge for the first out. Well, Giancarlo Stanton put a charge and one the other way. Out over the, he knew it. He's going to take a look. He's unruffled. Guess what? That's home run number 333 of his long career. He's done it before. You know, I'll just okay. Made a mistake. Let's go from here. He just never gets flustered. Yep. He's, he's a pro. So now Lagaris, the last couple of days, Travis Darno hit second after David Wright went on the DL. Lagaris getting his first crack at the two hole this year. Hit eight, uh, second eight times last year. The one for three last night with a run scored. Had better at bats the last three or four days. Still a bit of a struggle, him getting untracked, Lagaris. Twenty-eight-year-old David Phelps on the mound. Phelps has not thrown in a game in ten days. He made two relief outings for the Marlins. Then he went on the paternity list. His wife gave birth to a son on Monday, their third child, and. Now he's making his first start of the year, subbing for Henderson Alvarez. So it's been a kind of a busy last 10 days, and it'll be interesting to see how Phelps is able to respond to that. Well, we have a different home plate umpire, of course, Lance Barksdale. Uh, Eric Cooper last night was a pitcher's hump. Let's we'll see what Barksdale brings to the, to this game tonight. There he is, Lance. Firing crew Gary Sederstrom, the crew chief working at first, the rookie umpire Sean Barber at second, and Eric Cooper, who had the plate last night, going to third. 2 2 to Lagaris, and he misses with a cutter, 3 and 2. Phelps has already gone as far in this game as he did in his first ever start against the Mets. That was two years ago at Yankee Stadium. He lasted a third of an inning and gave up five runs. So, he's hoping for better. Tonight. Lagaris hits it out to right field, chasing Stanton back, but he's got room in front of the track, and that's the second out. And we'll take a look at the Coors Light fish defense. Yelich Ye uh, and left won the gold glove last year for the first time. Of course, Ichiro, multiple gold gloves. Make that 10 to be exact. And Echeverria gives them such a good uh, fielding shortstop. I like him at short. Great range. Real Muto, the youngster, behind the plate. You still got him, Keith. What? He only has 10. Oh, he's not going to catch me. 
<laughs> it's Duda. He's had himself what, quite a last few days. Last three games, seven for 13, five doubles, a home run, and six RBIs. One of only five players in Mets history now who've hit multiple extra base hits in three straight games. And let's not forget, Garrett, that he started spring training with all the talk. And I know it's the writers, it's what it, it, they have things to write about, and it's true. Is he going to hit left-handers? Are they going to have to platoon him? And what has he done? He's come right out of the gate and he's hitting lefties. I remember he was hurt at the beginning yep. of the spring. He had the, the side muscle pull. Wasn't able to participate for the first couple of weeks of games. So he has answered his critics. Uh, you know, we're only 10 games in. But uh, he has been having terrific at-bats against left-handers. And uh, so far, four for eight. I'll take that against lefties, wouldn't you? He's very humble about it. He says oh, I yeah. haven't been scorching it. I he said he's lucky. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to do that. Well, last year, well, the last five years since his big league career began, he had struggled against lefties, and it's an incredibly small sample this year. But I think just the fact that he's using left and left yep. center against righties and lefties is a huge plus for him. 2 2 from Phelps, and he runs inside 3 and 2. So I know we have this order. I mean, normally old school, Lucas would be your cleanup hitter. Uh, put this line up here and kind of a. He's hitting third. He goes down on the changeup from Phelps, who has himself a 1 2 3 opening inning. A couple of fly balls and a strikeout after one. Miami won. That's nothing. Michael Morris leads off the second inning for the Marlins and Colon misses outside for ball one. Morris 0 for 3 last night, hitting a 243. Really had difficulty with a couple pop ups, didn't he, Gary? Uh, near the Met dugout on deck circle. Just not moving very well. He's really kind of a guy without a position. You'd think he's more of a left fielder, but he doesn't cover any ground. He kind of the old way they used to do, try to hide someone at first base. I think I proved that wrong, Your Honor. Ichiro Suzuki on deck. I think so. And what we marveled about it last night, as we generally do with Morris, recalling the beginning of his big league career as a shortstop. Yes. Seattle. Well, he look how big and strong he is. Uh, Gosh, I, I'm sure he was just a youngster back then when he was playing shortstop, a little more wiry. Still, he's a big, he's a big monster. Well, they go in for the big shortstops in Seattle. They had 
A Rod there, of course. He's, he grew out of the position, too. Yes, and he uh, actually went back to Seattle, did he not? And before he went to the Giants. He did. Had a bad year, Didn't injury. So well, the second time. And he latched on with the Giants and a world championship. Two and two to Morris with Ichiro on deck and then JT Rail Muto. Nice crowd gathered on a Friday night. That's first weekend at home this season. A 10 game homestand to begin the home schedule, which is very unusual. And the Mets have won the first four. 2 2 from Cologne. And he just misses outside. Three and two. Well, tomorrow night, Jacob DeGrom makes his third start against Matt Latos, who has really struggled for the Marlins. Matt Harvey goes for his third win on Sunday against New York native Tom Kohler. Morse with a long turn at bat here against Cologne, who was very efficient in his last start in Atlanta. Cologne threw 77 pitches in seven innings in that start against the Braves. But using up a little more energy here against Morris. What a, I'm sorry, Gar. I'm just marveling what a wonderful career Cologne has had. Two hopper for Campbell to handle. And Morris retired one away. Well, Bartolo Cologne winning his first two starts of the season for the first time since 2008. There is pitching lines presented by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code NYM for free entry. He's also the first 40 plus pitcher to win two games in his team's first week since Roger Clemens did it for the Yankees in 2003. 15 wins last year and off to a very solid start this year. Two time 20 game winner. Saw Young winner. Well, here's Ichiro Suzuki, who has more hits and more at bats against Cologne than any other big league hitter. 26 hits, 87 at bats, including three home runs against Cologne. It could be distracting. And he slugs this one out to right, and Granderson is there. Two out. Well, Cologne. Is very, very, uh, I can't think of the right word. He's just very fluid with his motion, very, uh, very upright. Doesn't really drive off, doesn't really, dr well, he dries off, but he's no extra strain in his motion. He's very balletic for a big man. Driven toward the gap in left center off the bat of Real Muto. And this ball will bounce up over the fence for a ground rule double. And they said it was in play. In any event, Real Muto stops at second base. So JT Real Muto in just his eighth at bat of the year as his second double. Down and in, fastball, jumped on first pitch. Little leg kick, good balance. And you're seeing more and more, you know, in today's hitters. Uh, and I said it before, and I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's pertinent. Uh, it used to be. Almost 95% of right hand hitters when I was a kid growing up were high ball hitters. <laughs> left hand hitters were the uh, were low ball hitters. Now lefties are the same, but a lot of low ball hitters are from the right side of the plate. Here's a Danny Echeverria, the eight hitter, first base open, pitcher on deck, but Cologne's going to pitch to him. And Echeverria fouls it off. By the way, the replay showed that ball did bounce yes. out of play, went up against the railing. No matter. Rail moved to it, stopped at second anyway. David Phelps has never had a big league hit. Would be next. So two hits against Cologne. Both have been for extra bases. Stanton going deep in the first. And Real Muto with a two out double here in the second. You know, two winners ago, the, the Marlins signed Jared Saltalamaki to a three year, $21 million deal to shepherd their young pitching staff. But they love Real Muto, and now that he's up here with the injury to Jeff Mathis, he's playing. And Salta Lamaki is not a happy camper, as you can imagine. Well, Salta Lamaki had a bad year last year. Driven to center field, Agaris cutting over and makes the running grab side retire. Playing well over in the right center field and had to hustle on back to get it. Got his gold glove today and showed off his glove there. Lagaris makes everything look easy, like the center field counterpart to Cologne. 
He is amazing. One out there. Marlin. Manson Marlins move to the bottom of the second inning. Too bad it wasn't a uh, day game tomorrow. It'll be beautiful. Michael Kadire leads off against David Phelps, who worked a 1 2 3 first inning. Dyer has enjoyed his brief time as a man at City Field, 6 for 13 since the Mets got home. Had a really terrific at bat last night. Uh, one of four that the Mets put together. Duda, of course, in the seventh, but Kadire with 0 and 2 count got up to a full count, got an RBI base hit in that sixth inning. At two run six, drove in the first run, goes down swinging. Phelps on three pitches, blows one by Kadire for a second strikeout. Beat him with a fastball away, threw it by him. That is 15 strikeouts for Kadire. That's. Uh, something I did not expect. And just 38 at bats. Here's Daniel Murphy still trying to get on track. One for four last night. Just five for 33 to start the year. And fouls back the first pitch fastball from Phelps. Daniel swinging the bat at 152 and it's it's the slowest start through 10 games of his career, Daniel, and uh, I'm not the least bit concerned about it. Shouldn't be shocking considering he had the hamstring injury that. Kept him out of any big league exhibitions the last three weeks. Even if he got off to a bad start and was perfectly healthy, you, you, you know when the season's over where he's going to be. Drives this one out to left, but Yelich is right there. Two down. So five up and five down for David Phelps to start his night. And now Eric Campbell will come to bat. Campbell getting his third straight start at third base. One for three and Drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the sixth inning last night. Well, the Mets have gotten back to a full bench component. They called up Danny Muno from Las Vegas today. I'm glad to see that too. You know, a switch hitter who can play second, short, or third is here. Got here about two hours before game time after flying all day from the West Coast. And the Mets sent Rafael Montero down to make room. That's a whole other story. Campbell tribes went out to right, but right at Stanton, and that retires the side. So Phelps has gone perfectly through the first two innings. We go to the third, one nothing Miami.
go. Well, I'm afraid, folks, that that thing's been put on ice. It's very gray. Not becoming. Unless you wanted to go with the Charlie Weaver look. <laughs> David Phelps 0 for 6 in his major league career, leading off against Cologne in the third. This will be Phelps' first plate appearance of the season, his first start. D. Gordon on deck, and then Christian Yelich against Cologne, who gave up a first inning home run to Giancarlo Stanton for the only run of this game. And they were strike three called, so Cologne has his second strikeout of the night. Both called third strikes, top of the order hitter and the bottom of the order hitter. 206 wins, third among active pitchers. Tim Hudson has 214, CC Sabathia 208, so Cologne keeps going the way he's going. He might close some ground on those two. Uh, 2,115, 16 strikeouts. And that's kind of, you know, 2,000 strikeouts is a plateau for a pitcher. Well, he has surmounted a number of plateaus in his long big league career. Call strike to D. Gordon, nothing and one. Gordon took a call third strike his first time up and wasn't too happy about it. Let's have Campbell in on the grass against him. Gordon always a threat to bunt. Murphy sliding over on the backhand. And gets the speedy Gordon by a stride for the second out. Whenever Cologne has the left hand hitters rolling over and grounding out to second base, he's winning the fight. He pitches in enough, but I think he loves to take a little off and get a little sink and get you to pull the ball right at the second baseman. That's his game. But when he gets in trouble, he knows how to pitch in. So now he's got Yelich at the plate with Stanton on deck. Two out and nobody on. Yelich grounded out his first time up. And trying to push a bunt toward Campbell, who again was playing back. Yelich bluffed bunt his first time up. So the Mets are not playing Yelich as though they are concerned about the bunt, and Yelich trying to take advantage. And we've talked about this, Gary, even in spring training we did last night. We both feel that Yelich should be hitting third in this order. But they're reluctant to move him in that spot too early, too quickly. And I think after last year, the season that he had, um, I think he's ready. And you can move this guy down in the cleanup spot. Of course, then who do you hit second? Maybe Prado? Prado, absolutely. We've got Prado hitting cleanup, which is a little unexpected. Left center, pretty well. Back goes Lagaris. Another <laughs> great catch. Uh, Oh, he's just too good. Doesn't play too deep, but goes back so incredibly well. Where extra base hits go to die. And that man's gold low. Got the hardware tonight. And auditioning for the next one. He's a good one.
about getting to the ball. I mean, once he gets, look how far he has to run. You know, and he's a big league player. He's going to make the catch once he gets. It's all about getting there. Such terrific jumps and explosive speed. He can just turn on the Jets when he has to. And always a perfect angle. And he enjoys it. I would too if I could play like that out there in the outfield. Well, that's a good banner. Yes, it is. Great catch of three, two, one. Made two of them already tonight. Wilmer with a big home run last night. Three run shot that got the Mets even. And Phelps throwing strikes tonight. Phelps didn't always do that last year with the Yankees. Averaged over three and a half walks per nine innings, but he's been ahead on the count early. Last year, Wilmer had a six RBI game against the Marlins. One of two six RBI games he had last year. He had one against the Phillies. And he had one of those as a second baseman and one as a shortstop. As he grabs that one to Gordon. In fact, Wilmer is the only player in Major League history to have a six RBI game as a second baseman and a six RBI game as a shortstop in the same season. Esoterica. What impressive. So one out now, Anthony Recker. Getting his second start of the year tonight. Record catching today, as opposed to his cameo at third base the other night against the Phillies. Now yes. Darno getting the night off. Well, the Mets have made uh, have increased their bench. They've called up uh, Danny Muno, and now they have five bench players. And I think Terry Collins is probably very pleased about that. We promised you the rest of the story on Rafael Montero and you might have already heard this but. Let's complete the story. Muno coming up taking Montero's spot. Montero pitched in relief last night. The plan is for Montero to go to Vegas make two starts. And then come back and pitch as a starter for the Mets in Miami on the 28th. Which is what 11 days from now. Which will give the Mets a sixth starter for that turn through the rotation, which gives everybody an extra day of rest. The Mets are in a stretch there of 13 straight days without an off day. Well, it's all about, you know, got Harvey with the uh, coming off the surgery, Tommy John. They talked about doing that, uh, Sandy Alderson, uh, in spring training. And I, you know, I liked what I saw from uh, Montero, but I think he's young and he's a, he's really good, a starter, I feel. And, um, so he'll go down there and he'll stretch it out and uh, he will get a start in Miami and if he pitches well. Who knows what's going to happen. That's how their first base runner of the night his record draws a one out walk after Phelps had retired the first seven. And now Bartolo Colon who in his last start had himself a broken back helmet dropping base hit to right field. Yes he did. It wasn't pretty. But this is a bunt situation. And we'll see how aggressively the corner infielders play it for the Marlins. Prado, a very, very smart player. And look how tight he is in there to put the pressure on the pitcher. And Cologne drops it down nicely, but Phelps going to second. Close play. He got him. Relay to first is not handled by Gordon. Otherwise, they would have had a double play. Nice play by the pitcher. Phelps, very aggressive. Got it to Echeverria just in time to get a record. See if you don't hesitate. Look at up and throw. You're going to get him. Very nice. And it looks like Echeverria's back leg, his left foot, got caught on the slide. So it's a good takeout by Wrecker. Kind of made him move that that left leg, and he couldn't really plant and get much on the throw. Got it there in time, but Gordon with the small glove unable to pick it out of the dirt. And so Cologne's at first with two out for Granderson, who flied out to center his first time, and he takes a fastball strike. Well, the Mets, Mets play hard. Watch the takeout. That's perfectly gotten his way and couldn't get anything on the throw. Kind of clipped him a little bit there. Well done. It is right there. You're close enough to the bag, and he kind of clipped his left foot, and he 
couldn't get it in front enough where he could drive and make the throw. So those are little things that uh, help you win ball games. Well, it prolongs the inning. You've got a guy at the plate who's perfectly capable of slamming one out of the ballpark. Phelps, though, ahead of him 0 2. And Granderson takes in tight. Just to complete the thought about Montero and that start on the 28th, it naturally has fueled instant speculation about whether Montero might stay in the rotation after that one start. And much of that speculation then surrounds Dylan G, who has struggled. Granderson gets under one. And it's into right field for Stanton. And that retires the side. So Phelps works around his first base runner of the night, still has held the Mets without a hit. One nothing Marlins. We have that in spring training. Last night it was a blood red. The Empire State Building. All sorts of tributes going on. Nice crowd tonight. That's down one nothing as we start the fourth. The man's responsible for the one. Is at the plate. John Carlos Stanton took advantage of the shorter dimensions in right center. To hit his second home run in two nights. His 156th career home run. Last night he became the Marlins. All time career home run leader. He had been tied going into the season with Dan Ugla. There is only one other player currently active who is his franchise's all time home run leader. And that's from the other Florida team, Evan Longoria, the all time home run leader for the Rays. Let's watch carefully, folks. Um, you folks at home watching, just see how Colon pitches him. Those first two pitches down in the strike zone. Very careful. Another one. So he let him off uh, with a fastball, knee high outside corner for a called strike. Pitcher's pitch. Came back with a hard sinker down and in it missed. And then came back with a hard sinker down and in it. He pulled foul. He's keeping the ball down. This guy knows what he's doing out here, number 40. He was ahead on Stanton 0 and 2 the first time. Slider, good one. So really, if, if, if this entire lineup, and we're going to take another look, hopefully at the home run. There she comes. Fastball up, belt high, out over the plate. See you later. So this time, Cologne's goal is I'm going to be very careful, keep him in the ballpark. Prado and Morris to follow. Stanton hits one off the end of the bat that curls foul. 
thirty seven home runs last year. Earned him. A 13 million 13 a year three hundred twenty five million dollar contract. But you know he's not the highest player played pay player on his team this year. Right. It's uh, making six point five this year. It's back loaded correct. Dan Heron is the highest paid Marlin this year ten it's, million. Hey it's getting paid pretty good coin. Three hundred twenty five million is pretty good anyway you slice it. He Ooh. gets under this one to left field should stay in the ballpark for Kadaya. It's a mile high. Got away with that one. Uh, this is down the middle. It's down, but down the middle. And oh, it got a little sink up in the strike zone. Hey, as I always said, a spherical ball, cylindrical bat, moving objects. It's um, difficult. It's not easy. That's Hard to hit it square. Here's Martin Prado. Broke his bat and grounded out to Campbell his first time up, and he takes a slider for a strike. So Cologne mixing in a few breaking balls. The um, the numbers on Cologne through two starts, 91% fastballs, even a higher percentage than he was throwing last year. And quickly ahead on Prado, 0-2. Of course, when you say 91% fastballs with Cologne, you're talking about sinkers, yeah. four seamers, and a little cutter. You know, throw. He's got a little up, bit down, here. In, out. Yeah, he just he knows what he's doing. A little extra here, a little off there. Michael Morris on deck. Cologne has struck out two tonight. A little bit high to Prado. Team Prado split his year between the Diamondbacks and the Yankees last year, coming over in the same trade that brought the Marlins their starter tonight, David Phelps, with Nate Baldi going the other way. Mm. And it's up the middle, a base hit for Prado. Now Prado's another high ball hitter, line drive hitter, not a home run hitter, doubles hitter. And you can see right here, too much plate. And he just we, why is he a high ball hitter because he swings level he just he stays on top no uppercut here just beautiful right look at that follow through that's like tabletop like a mesa out in Arizona like a right handed Keith Hernandez <laughs> <laughs> one out and one on for Michael Morris the Marlins have their third hit Morris grounded out his first time up. Took a little bit off and missed inside. One and zero. Marlins just three and seven on the year. Biggest problem so far early in the season has been their pitching with Jose Fernandez out for the first part of the year. Henderson Alvarez now hurt. Their bullpen struggling. Slowly hit. Can they turn two? Campbell gets it away to Murphy. The off balance throw and they double up. The slow footed Morris to end the inning. Well, Murph did not have easy footwork at second base, but he had time and he took advantage of it. And they turned the 5 4 3 double play. That gets Cologne through the top of the fourth. Still 1 0 Marlins.
straight games. What's the franchise record for most consecutive wins? You know, uh, I have forgotten. Well, the Mets had a, in 69 had a great second half. Actually, they set the record in 69, but it was earlier in the year. Really? Yep. Well, Ligaris takes a curveball for a strike from David Phelps. Ligaris flied out to right his first time up. And if memory serves, they've matched that winning streak a couple of times. Ligaris trying to lay one down with Prado playing back, but ran into it, and it's 0 and 2. Good idea from one. So it was in 69, but, but they've earlier. Never, but they, they've, they've equaled that, I believe, but never surpassed it. Due to on deck, Kadire behind him. Phelps deals 0 2, and Ligaris takes outside. That's about just one base runner so far tonight. Record walked in the third, so Phelps coming back from the birth of his son on Monday has pitched inspired baseball. This is with the cutter, and it's 2 and 2. David Phelps, 28 years old, 14th round pick by the Yankees in 08 out of Notre Dame. One of four active big leaguers who played for the Fighting Irish. Jeff Samarjo, the most famous because he played on the gridiron. John Axford, the reliever with the Rockies. A.J. Pollock, outfielder with the Diamondbacks, the others. Still two and two to Ligaris. Of course, the Mets had a Notre Dameer a few years ago, and Aaron Heilman. That's right. A Golden Domer. Mm, well, Garris after falling behind 0 and 2 able to work the count full tried to front door slider him. Remember, was it Esteban Loiza who pitched with the memory pitch with the Nats right. He was the one that I first saw that really threw the front door slider to the right hand hitters. Garris shoots one the other oh. way Gordon able to slide over and stop it and gets the out that ball was hit very hard and Gordon did well. To stay with it. Well, his, his feet come out from under him on the grass. And that's one thing when you play out there. No, he actually just played it safe. He made it a lot tougher. Look, he takes the dirt with him, too. I've never liked playing out on the outfield grass. I never, never did. Not even with a guy like Stargell up or John Milner or McCovey. Of course, now it's standard operating procedure with the big lefties up. Gordon will back on the grass for Duda. And after the first pitch, they're switching out defenders and again. Switch positions. We still haven't figured that I out. I've got to go down and talk to uh, Mr. Redman about that. I was remiss in my duties. Duda hits it out to center, but Ichiro hasn't played perfectly. And that's the second out. Terry Hill is their esteemed infield coach for the Marlins. And I don't know what the, the rationale is. Maybe it's just to confuse the hitter. I don't know. Well, it shouldn't. I mean, if you're a hitter, you just go up there and see the ball and hit it. You know. But uh, right now, Phelps has been very impressive. He has been on the corners. He's moving the ball in and out, not making any mistakes over the middle of the plate. Phelps had his moments with the Yankees last year. Made 17 starts, 15 relief appearances. The overall results were middling: five and five, four point three eight. But he had his moments, and he's having a moment so far tonight. Of course, last night, Jared Cosart held the Mets. In check for the first four innings, and then they got to him in the fifth. St. Louis kid. Mm -hmm. So you know he grew up a Cardinal fan. I guess he's too young to have been a St. Louis Browns fan. Mm. Two and one to Kadir, who struck out his first time up. It's interesting. I'm a little bit concerned with Kadir swinging and missing a lot. Uh, kind of interesting. Batting champion, solid professional hitter. Well, let me throw a couple of things at you. One, hit a lot of home runs in spring training this year, and the two out of nobody on, maybe trying to hit one. And the other, he's 36. He's well traveled. 
He's been a great player for a long time. But he's playing a new uh, a new city. Maybe trying to impress a little bit. Well you know what no matter how old you are. Or whether you're a one two year player or 14 15 year veteran. When you get a new uniform on and a new home crowd. It's uh, it's a little bit of. Uh, pressure would be the word I hate that word but yes you want to. Get off to a good start and impress the home folks. Slowly hit down to third for Prado. And it's a one two three inning for David Phelps he's held the Mets hitless over the first four and he's got a one nothing lead. Nothing. Bartolo Colon gave up a first inning home run to Giancarlo Stanton, and that's been it so far. Ichiro Suzuki getting the start in center field tonight. Flat out to right field his first time up. Delivered a triple as a pinch hitter last night, and then scored that controversial run with his slide around Travis Darno's tag, and then his subsequent dive for the plate, and then the six minute replay process. Which overturned the initial out call. Marcelo Zuna getting a night off. He has looked troubled at the plate. So, 41 year old Ichiro Suzuki, owner of 2,848 big league hits, 1,278 more in Japan. That's 4,126 hits for Suzuki combined between. MLB and NPB. 15th year in the big leagues. Can you believe that? Hopped one up. Campbell right near the bag. One out. So one out and nobody on. JT Rail Muto coming up. Let's go to Steve Gelbs who has tonight's view from the Pepsi porch. Gary, it's a pretty beautiful view up here. Nice light breeze going on. But, you know, it has been almost a week now since the news came down about Henry Mejia getting suspended. Earlier this week, I spoke with Sandy Alderson a little bit about it, and he made it clear to me that once Mejia is eligible to return, his spot in this bullpen on this team, it's not guaranteed. Sandy going so far actually has to say to me that he hopes there is no spot for him on this team upon his return. It's a pretty stern way that Sandy said the news, but I, I, I actually was not surprised based on what I had heard coming out of the Mets clubhouse after the news broke. From a lot of the players, you've seen the stages kind of go 
very quickly from surprise and shock to disappointment and anger. And I circled back with Sandy Alderson, asked him if it was fair to characterize his comments as angry. And what he said to me was that actually probably a better way to put it is more of a broken trust and a can we rely on this guy anymore. And he said to me that the anger that is coming out of the clubhouse, specifically from guys like David Wright, he thinks it's almost a salvo to the rest of the team as well, that if you choose to make this mistake, it's not something that you're just going to be welcomed right back in with open arms. It's a big deal. Well, you know what? The players over the have, have shown, I think, in the union, and I, the players that are playing the game today, I think, Gary, they have shown a desire to eradicate steroids from the game. Uh, they were all for increased penalties, um, and I, I, I think the penalties now are appropriate. Um, and you're hurting your team and it, it is a choice and you know what there's um, I can't think of the right word there's uh, consequences to your choice well it's a choice but I, I feel a lot more comfortable if those who make that choice and get caught came clean rather than saying that it was an accident or it was in a supplement I mean you know there, there's no wind stroll in in supplements that's just not true and and it, it's about time that those who get caught own up to it. And I think that's part of it. I, I, especially from management standpoint. I don't know if the players feel the same way, but if you're Sandy Alderson, you probably feel a lot better about the situation if the player owned up to it. And Chavaria hits one over toward the left field line, a long one for Kadir. He won't get there, and it bounces up over the wall for a ground rule double. So a two out double for Echeverria. It's fumbled by Kadire, but it was already ruled a ground rule double, and Echeverria will go back to second base. So the fourth hit for the Marlins, three of them extra bases. Sinker down and in, and a good one. It's just nice hitting by Echeverria. That was off the plate. And you see clearly it hits on the black background of the wall above the orange horizontal line. And again, the first ground rule double by Real Muto. They they missed the call. This time they got it right, right from the beginning. So now it's the pitcher Phelps still looking for his first big league hit. Bats with a runner at second and two out. You know the other piece about Mejia and his possible return or or not is that in his absence, the Mets bullpen has been very good, and they've got two pieces coming back. Hopefully yes. in fairly short order. Vic Black should be ready in a week or so. Bobby Parnell shortly after that. They may not have a place for Henry Mejia in and, that bullpen. And Gary, if I can interject on that as well, that that's part of what Sandy Alderson was saying too. He said part of the reason you don't want to have a spot for him is a pragmatic way of thinking that a your bullpen is pitching very well, but b you have to remember that Mejia is not eligible to be on the playoff roster. So if you're a team looking to make the postseason. Why would you want to give the spot of someone who could help you on the playoff roster to someone who can't? It's an excellent point. And you know, uh, Steve. Uh, also, I think the um, the positive coming out of this is uh, it's thrust it's thrust Familia into the save role, and I think he's ready. And I don't think he's going to relinquish it. I think he's going to be. Uh, take the bull by the horns and be the, 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 the stopper for this club uh, for, for more than a few years to come. He's been perfect in his save chances so far. Colon takes care of Phelps. He goes down looking for the second time. Third strikeout for Colon. And he works around the double by Echeverria. We're halfway through at City Field. 1 0 Miami.
against Bartolo Colon in the first inning, and David Phelps has made that stand up through four hitless innings. Colon has settled in as well, and we've got a pitcher's duel going as the Mets come to bat in the bottom of the fifth. Young oh. Mets fans on hand tonight for the first Friday home game for the Mets this year. Isn't it wonderful? And it's a beautiful night. That's trying to go to 5 and 0 at home for the first time since 2005 when of course they played in the parking lot. During tonight's game you can get interactive with SNY game day on SNY.tv featuring pitch by pitch coverage player cards and in-depth stats. Check out SNY game day on SNY.tv your online home of all things New York sports. And by the parking lot I mean very reverentially our old home. Shea Stadium, which now is the parking lot. Remember how uh, emotional we were when uh, the last game at Shea? I, I, Ronnie, you and I, we had a little tear. We still get emotional sometimes thinking about that place. That old ballpark. Spent a lot of nights in the upper deck at Shea. Eric Campbell on deck, Wilmer Flores behind him. And the changeup from Phelps misses a ball and a strike. Murphy fly to left his first time up. That's about one base runner, a walk to Wrecker in the third. Phelps has struck out two. He's had a couple of nice defensive plays made behind him. First start of the year for David Phelps, filling in for the injured Henderson Alvarez. He has some shoulder inflammation. Murphy lifts this one to left. Should be easy for the Gold Glover Yelich. One out. Getting, getting Murph out away from getting it lifting in the air. And I've always liked to have seen Murph uh, get a little closer to the plate an inch or two, but hey, I'm not the one up there facing the 90 mile an hour fastballs. You're thinking if he gets closer, he can drive that ball. Murph's well. natural hitter to left center. Remember when he came up, how much he drove to left center field? You threw him outside, you threw it at your own uh, peril. And, um, you know, we all learn to become more pull hitters as we become veterans and uh, get a little, I, I guess, wiser. But uh, I always felt that Murph, the way he hits, that he should, that outside corner should be his. And drive that thing into that 370 gap out there in left center field. Campbell lined out to right his first time up. And Phelps keeps the ball away from him, two and one. The last time Phelps went to the mound was 10 days ago against, or seven days ago against the Rays. And he lasted a third of an inning. Gave up four runs. Then he took paternity leave. His baby was born on Monday. He took a bullpen session. He, he lives in Pittsburgh and uh, did a bullpen session at a small college there on Tuesday to keep himself ready. Campbell draws a walk. But uh, Phelps pitching at the top of his game so far tonight second walk of the night issued by Phelps the Mets have yet to get a hit well Wilmer Flores had the big hit in the fifth inning last night that's for down three nothing got a couple of men on and Flores unloaded his first home run of the year off Jared Cozart to get the Mets even now he bats with the tying run at first in the fifth inning tonight. Well, Wilmer has been, uh, he's a middle end hitter. And that was a cutter that just didn't cut and stayed on the inner half. And that's uh, Wilmer's happy area. Grounded out to second base his first time tonight. Phelps quickly ahead of him, 0 and 2. The feeling was that Phelps could throw between 75 and 85 pitches tonight, having not made a start yet this year. See how far they actually go with him. 
Just off the plate, one and two to Flores. So you notice that when Phelps misses, he doesn't miss over the middle. He's missing out uh, off the corners. Predominantly throwing away, keeping the ball down. Predominantly fastball skill. Hit hard, face hit. So Flores takes the fastball the other way. And the Mets have a couple of men on for the first time tonight. That's their first hit off David Phelps. Who held them without one for four and a third. Oh, that this is why you always want your best outfield arm in right field. Base hit to right field. You don't want a first and third situation. There was no chance there. And it's a beautiful swing. Flores, who's been struggling, has been very calm, hasn't given in. Beautifully done going the other way. Well, the Mets get a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. Campbell at second, Flores at first, Anthony Wrecker threw a walk his first time up. And the Marlins have some stirring around in their bullpen. Again, with Phelps making his first start, questionable about how deep he can go, so Mike Redmond's going to get somebody ready. They get a left hander up. Well, don't forget he started in the bullpen. So what is he on like a 75 pitch count? Record fouls it by there was Brad Hand up in the bullpen and looked awfully good against the Mets in spring training this year. Well, I did not realize we got a full house tonight, don't we? Wow. Well, you know, it's free shirt Friday. That's right. It's Matt Harvey shirt night, right? He's the first we one. Promoted those shirts last night. That's why. Yes. Everybody's here. <laughs> oh, and by the way, the Mets have won five in a row. Yes, they have. A lot of and excitement about this team right now. And I remember how hungry Met fans were in 1984 when we turned it around. Uh, and we lost to the Cubs that year, and I remember Met fans are starving for a winner. You needed a wild card that year. Yeah, we did. 85 too. In 87. Yeah. No I mean, think about that. You would have been in the postseason. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. 89, we wouldn't have. But six years in a row. We would have probably turned on the Jets. I think the Padres got ahead of us. I'm not sure in 89. But we'd have been fighting for something. Right. Instead of just playing the season out, I think we would have probably been the wild card there. One and two to record. Takes the cutter off the plate, two and two. Bartolo Colon is on deck, so this is a big at bat for Wrecker. If Phelps can get him out, he's got a pretty good chance to get through the inning. Mets are not going to bat for Colon in the fifth inning. Two two. Oh, Wrecker with a good oh. bat here. Able to watch one just off the plate. Did, Phelps snatching at it, thinking he might have gotten it. Did you see his initial reaction? That's I think it's probably just off the plate, and it's a good call. You mm -hmm. can read. He lips. wanted that ca call. Excuse me. So now three and two to Wrecker with two men on. And that's ball four, and the bases are loaded for Cologne. So two walks in the inning, three on the night for Phelps. Second time he's walked the number eight hitter record. And now Cologne, who drove in a run with a base hit in his last start, will get a chance with the bases loaded here. I think uh, Phelps' uh, emotions got the best of him on that close call. And there's the left hander, Brad Hand. And I missed the slider. This is a good time for the pitching coach to come out and have a chat. Gets the pitcher up, calm him down. This could well be Phelps' last batter. You got Granderson coming up next. You got the lefty getting ready in the bullpen. And with Phelps' situation of not having made a start this year, not having worked in a week, this may be as far as they want to go. Cologne tried to sacrifice his first time up, but Phelps made a nice play, got a force at second. Campbell now at third, Flores at second, Wrecker at first. The corners are in against Cologne. Middle infielders 
playing for a double play. And Colon hits it in the air, left center field, over toward the gap goes Ichiro to make the catch, but Campbell tags and comes in with the tying run. Another RBI for the hitting Colts hero, Bartolo Colon, to tie the game. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, he attacked the first pitch. It's a fastball. And remember, he's coming over from the American League, didn't do much hitting most of his career. Outside corner fastball, well done. There are a lot of things going right for this team right now, but there are a few things that create more excitement than a Bartolo Colon at bat. At the broken bat hit in Atlanta to drive it a run, now his sack fly has tied up the game. And that ends David Phelps's night. He goes away unhappy. Gold of the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Brad Hand coming in. We'll be right back to City Field. Giving up just one hit over four and two thirds. Bartolo Colon with the bat able to tie up the game. And Phelps left muttering to himself as he left. Taking a look back at the home plate umpire Lance Barksdale. Still ruining that call on the 2 2 pitch to Anthony Record. And we had the overhead and it just missed. Good call, you'll see, just off the plate. But you know, you kind of want that one. Uh, Granderson facing hand and he takes a curveball for a strike. Curtis 0 for 2. He's flied out twice. 25 year old Brad Hand has bounced back and forth. Marlins and Miners the last four or five years. Starter, reliever. Power curve misses and it's one and one. Hand was in consideration for the fifth starter's job coming out of spring training, but they decided to put him in the bullpen as a second lefty instead. This is just his third appearance. Wouldn't be shocked if he winds up in the rotation at some point. One on one to Granderson. And he bounces one foul up the line. Well, Curtis is trying to get on track. 0 for 2 tonight. Came into the game hitting 167. 11 walks hasn't had an extra base hit or an RBI yet. Got a chance here with Flores at second and Wrecker at first and two out. And Curtis lays off the curveball two and two.
Nicely done. A real Muto there, nice block, textbook. Two out, two on, two and two to Granderson. And mm. Curtis goes down to the fastball to end the inning. But the Mets get even as they come alive in the fifth inning again, much to the dismay of David Phelps, who will get a no decision tonight. Cologne with the RBI, and the Mets are tied at one after five. Third time through the batting order for Bartolo Colon. D. Gordon leads off in the sixth inning in a tie game. And fouls back the first pitch fastball. Gordon has struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. Marlins got a run on the first on Giancarlo Stanton's home run. Bartolo Colon took care of that himself. Before his RBI hit in Atlanta, Colon had not had an RBI in 10 years. Now he has RBIs in back to back starts. <laughs> Your old buddy Joaquin Andujar say, "You never know." <laughs> mm. Blew that fastball by Gordon, 92 from Cologne, right. the hardest pitch he's thrown all night. Right down the pipe, swung right under it. Back shoulder drops, same angle on the bat, and you will swing under it. Slap to short. Flores comes in against the speedy Gordon. A wide throw, but Duda able to slap the tag on Gordon to get the out. Duda has been adept at that this year. Lucas knows what he's doing around that bag. And he gets a little bit too sidearm on his throws, Garrett Flores. And really, Lucas didn't have to come off the bag. He was uh, really not tremendous footwork there. That was not a bad throw in defense of Flores. No D, you're not. But he does tend to get a little sidearm, and when you get sidearm, that ball runs into the runner towards you know when, when you're first base. But you know what? You're used to how Flores throws. Yelich three at bats, and he's tried to bunt at some point in every one of them, with Campbell playing back at third. Last time up, he had a long drive to left center, and Lagaris made a splendid play to take an extra base hit away from him. Garris showing no more respect this at bat playing shallow again against Yelich. Granderson's in shallow also. Yelich little back issue missed a couple games last week. Good.
Malone has struck out three tonight. Naked mm. four as he gets Yelich. Two down. Just and so he'll face Stanton with the bases empty. Fastball away. Belt high. Swung right under it. He's had a little extra life this inning. He's strong. I agree. Pitching, you know, when you pitch in the tight ball game, one mistake will lose you the ball game. And he's made one already tonight to this guy, determined not to make another. Two out and nobody on. I would be wouldn't be surprised if Stanton's issued a walk here. I mean, he's really the only guy that that can leave the yard and you can be on the uh, short side. Is that what it is, Gary? <laughs> right. Pitcher of record on the short side. Well, he's the most dangerous hitter in the National League, and everybody knows it. And certainly, if anybody was concerned that he'd have ill effects from being hit in the face by a pitch last September, I think he's pretty much dispelled that early in the season. What kind of hat does that kid have on? Three and out of Stanton. <laughs> Not going to groove one here. Or will he? Three and one. I might have been inclined to turn Stanton loose in that spot. Ooh, a little slider three and one. You know, in these situations when Barry Bonds was in his heyday, teams would just walk him intentionally yep. with the bases empty. You get walked all the time. Stanton with it's a big stride. He's just a big wiry guy. Bones worked his way back to three and two. Struck him out. Alone, living large. Now the Mets come to bat in the bottom of the sixth with the game tied. Juan Magaris is 0 for 2. And I like what what um, Cologne did there. Fell behind 3 and 0 tie ball game. I said he might walk him. Looked like he was. Came right back after him. I love it. 
Regaris scorched one to the right side his last time up, and D. Gordon made a sliding stop to throw him out. Regaris 0 for 2 tonight. Broken bat ladder base hit for Lagares. Just the Mets second hit of the night and they got the leadoff man on in the sixth against Brad Hand. And just the right person to get lead the inning off. You've got a threat for a stolen base here even though you got a left hander out there change up on the outer half of the plate. Stayed level. Good balance. So Lagares aboard. Well, we talked earlier tonight about the improved results in a small sample for Lucas Duda against lefties. He said, I'm not hitting missiles, but he is four for eight against left handers. And you got a shift on Lucas, not a complete full shift. But you certainly got uh, the shortstop, Echevarria, way up the middle. I have no idea why Martin Prado is playing. There you go. You got to get back. I don't believe Duda is going to bunt. This is a lefty that Duda has hit well. Four for 13 with a home run. And takes a fastball strike from him. Duda tonight has struck out and fly to center. 0 for 2. At the base said last night against the lefty Mike Dunn that gave the Mets the lead for good in the seventh inning. Not a very big lead from Ligaris at first. Very very cautious lead. Well, at this point with Duda, do you want to think about running? You could, but I don't put the left hander out there. Now remember, Ligaris, you know, hasn't been around a long time and probably not familiar with Brad Hand's move. You know that's why you have a left hander out there. It's always a great equalizer with a stolen base threat. Well, Man doesn't have much of a move. You know you always got to wonder if you're a base runner and I was not a base stealer by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but is he giving me a bad move. He's always he's holding back his good one. You know if you don't know the pitcher. Well, what you don't want to do is make a mistake with Duda at the plate. And it cost yourself a base runner. And Duda lays off the slider, two and one. Remember last year, Lagares was very reluctant to steal bases, and then late August, early September, Terry Collins, Collins said, "You have to steal." Right. Gave him must steal signs, and he stole eight in the nine-game span, just to show he could do it. Wound up with 13 for the year. Certainly got the speed. You can tell that from watching him play in the outfield. Morris holding against him, not an accomplished first baseman. Two and one to Duda. He bounces one foul. With sinker two and two. Well, a, a young slugger made his big league debut in Chicago yes, this afternoon. He did. Chris Bryant among amidst much fanfare. How many home runs did he hit in spring? Uh, nine in spring, three more in a week and a half in the minor leagues. He went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts today, and the Cubs blew a lead. Not the debut they were hoping for. Well, nervous. Good eye. Good eye. Full count to Duda. Today's game changer brought to you by T Mobile, and there is the aforementioned Chris Bryant. Blue eyed kid, isn't he? University of San Diego. Great college career, and much anticipated debut today. And he batted cleanup in his major league debut. Three and two. Lagaris not running and Duda fouls it off. Here's a note. The last Cub to back cleanup in his major league debut was a guy named Heinz Becker in 1943. Right in the middle of World War II. Right. So that's what, 72 years ago? Chris Bryant, no Heinz Becker. There goes Lagaris and Duda hits one up the middle of base hit. Lagaris goes first to third. And the Mets have the go ahead run at third with nobody out. Who says I can't hit left handers? 
Lagaris on the run here easily first to third. You see him look over his shoulder and find out where the ball is. Well, Duda will probably say it again. I'm not hitting missiles, but he's using the middle of the field, using left field, and getting results. You don't have to hit a home run with every swing, Gary. A situation hit there. Base hits. You just move the move the chain. Move it on down the line. So Lucas is now five for nine against the lefty. Sam Dyson, who pitched last night, is up in the bullpen. So the Mets poised to try and take their first lead of the night. Michael Kadir, the batter. Kadir has struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. Feel the double play depth. Slap to the right side, past Morrison into right field, and the Mets take the lead. Lagaris scores as Kadir sneaks one through the right side, and it's two to one New York. Now we talked about Morris's lack of mobility at first base. Yeah, and this is defense, and, and this is ball's not hit hard. Had double play written right all. He had two options. He makes the play, throw the Garris out at the plate, or get a double play. And these are the little things, you know. Defense wins you ball games. This ball was not hit hard. If you're Kadir, you're going. Thank you very much. They got a four over there in Stratomatic at first base. So Kadir is now hit in. Six straight games drives in his seventh run of the year Mets lead for the first time tonight now Murphy still nobody out and he takes a strike from him. Just out of his reach. He's in way too close. To come off on the on that cut of the grass. That's running down the baseline. Of the second base. One, one to Murphy who's flied out twice to left field tonight. So three straight hits for the Mets. Lagaris uh, broke his bat but lined it into left. With Lagaris running, Duda found the middle of the diamond. And Kadir able to poke one just beyond Morse's reach to drive in the run. Now the Mets poised for a bigger inning against Brad Hand, leading two to one. And Murphy hits one slowly. They'll only be able to get the out at first. So that would be productive out as Murphy grounds out. Duda goes to third, Kadir to second. Before Eric Campbell comes up, let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has a game break brought to you by Honda. Glad he made contact that last time up. Tough to take the golden sombrero in your first game. Mike Redman on his way to the mound with the right hand hitters coming up. Campbell Flores Wrecker. He's got the right hander Dyson ready in the bullpen. Everything right now, Gary, is going the Mets way. And then when you're hot, you get it's just amazing. It's like a snowball. Everything goes your way. Well, Hand got some consoling pats on the back from his teammates because not much was hit hard against him, but he's given up the go ahead run here in the sixth. And the Mets looking for more as the Marlins go to the bullpen.
Knight comes right back out here tonight. They got him from Toronto on waivers. Had a cup of coffee for Toronto back in 2012. He pitched last night. Ending in a third, no runs. Tight spot, infield in. Well, the last night, sixth inning, Campbell came up with a chance to get a run home. They brought in A.J. Ramos to face him, and he got a sack fly. They put the Mets in front. Here's second and third and one out with the Mets up a run in the sixth. And it's Dyson on the mound, getting ahead, nothing and one. Campbell is lined out to right, then he walked and scored in the fifth. Good sinker ball right there. Campbell fished for it. Duda at third, Kadire at second, so not a whole lot of speed out there. The infield up for Campbell. The ball and a strike. Dyson failed to catch the return throw from Real Muto. And D. Gordon was alertly right there just in case Dyson couldn't find it. Flores is in record to follow. Sinker ball pitcher, Redman in need of a ground ball. In the air, right field, that'll get the run home. Stanton is there, dude is tagging. And Campbell does it again. Second night in a row, he provides a sixth inning sacrifice fly, and the Mets lead three to one. Different pitcher, same result. Execution, execution, and breaks going your way. Men coming up here, nicely done. Two sack flies for Campbell back to back. You know, it's a routine fly ball. The right deep enough where you can tag up. Ball in the dirt, wild pitch, or a pass ball, you can score on air. So two runs home in the inning. Mets in front three to one. Kadire at third with two out for Flores. Who had a base hit to right field his last time up. Goes after a high fastball, nothing and one. And the runs in this inning charged to Brad Hand. He is now a pitcher of record on the short side. Tapper back to Dyson. And he throws out Flores as almost, almost tripped on the bag. Inning over. But Michael Kadir able to poke one past Morris to drive in the go ahead run. Mets score two and lead 3 1 after six. Martin Prado leading off in the seventh inning. 
This is always the inning when you're the pitcher that you run a goose egg of after your team has put you ahead. You scored some runs. You want to run up a one two three inning or just a zero up there. Otto has one of the Marlins four hits tonight single to center his last time up. And takes a strike. Well, Cologne able to keep his pitch count low again tonight, so he takes them out for the seventh with nobody warming up in the bullpen behind him. It'd be nice to get nine, wouldn't it? I think they'd settle for seven right now. I, I would like eight. A quick inning here. Morrison Suzuki to follow. Lined into right center. It's a base hit for Prado. Lagaris over quickly to cut it off and holds him to a single. So Prado has his second hit of the night, and Morris will come to the plate as the tying run. Well, Prado can just hit again, belt high. You got to keep the ball down on Prado. Belting up, he's deadly. He made a living off that high pitch. Nice cutoff by Lagaris. So five hits now for Miami. Prado has two of the five. Morris. After Prado singled on the fourth, grounded into a double play. In fact, both times up, he's grounded the ball to Campbell at third. He's 0 for 2. Lifts this one to right, easy for Granderson. And that's the first down of the inning. So Morse is easy prey for Cologne, one out. Big crowd tonight. Traffic on the Shea Bridge. Beautiful night for baseball. Should be even. A more perfect day tomorrow. Say hi. <laughs> well, I got the whole familia. We'll probably see familia tonight. Well, here is Ichiro, who's 0 for 2, fly to right, pop to third, and the Mets will now get the bullpen cranking with one out in the seventh. 78 pitches for Cologne through 77 is last start in Atlanta in seven innings. Such a an advantage to have these low pitch innings enabling Cologne to go so deep into games. JT Real Muto waiting on deck. Each row slaps nice. one through the hole, a base hit. And now the Marlins have the tying runs on base. Major League hit number 2,849 for each year old. That'll get Terry a little bit anxious here now. You got the bottom of the order now in Real Muto and Echeverria. Just nice hitting up fastball. My buddy Carlisle throwing like he means it in the Mets bullpen. Now you got JT Real Muto at the plate. Against Cologne and Real Muto hit the torrent of the ball his first time up tonight, driving a double to left center. Cologne got him on a ground ball to second base his second time up. Prado at second, each row the tying run at first with one out. Real Muto making his third straight start behind the plate for the Marlins and takes a slider for a strike. Remember, Real Muto got a double his last at bat. First pitch, fastball hitting. Down and in, what is Cologne throwing first pitch? Slider down and away. He remembers, like I do. That's why he's won over 200 ball games. Echeverria, the number eight hitter on deck. Campbell guarding the line, something that's not really in the philosophy. Of Terry Collins, but they're guarding the line here. Real Muto lifts one. Gotta go out of play. Nothing in two. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question for tonight. We asked what the franchise record is for consecutive wins. That's 11, isn't it? Four times they've done it. 69 in May of that year. 86 was the first time. I mean, out of the one of those. Had to be a little streak in there with 108 wins. Jerry Blevins joins Buddy Carlisle in the Mets bullpen. 108, that's a lot. It's fun. You try it. It's two out of every three. 108 and 54. Just off the plate to Real Muto, one and two. 
JT Real Muto, just 24 years old. And he is the Marlins catcher of the future and increasingly looking like their catcher of the present. Last year hit 299 in double A. Ryan Morris up in the bullpen for the Marlins as they work down toward the bottom of the batting order. First and second and one out. 3 1 New York, seventh inning. 1 2. Just got a piece of that fastball. Cologne starting to get a little bit up this inning. I think this is going to be his last inning. Here, if he gets out of it. Just starting to get his pitches up. That change up right there also. He tipped it off with his motion, something he never does, which shows maybe a little sign of weariness. Well, he's approaching his season high for pitches through 86 on opening day, 84 right now. Again, the one two. Another high fastball, 93 from Cologne. That's the hardest pitch he's thrown tonight. I think he knows that this is his last inning, and he's he letting it all hang out, as uh, we used to say. He's just rearing back and something extra. I'm going you know, to give it my. I need. I need two outs, and we'll leave it right here. Go out, give it my all. Trying to become the first starting pitcher, 41 years or older, to win his first three starts as Kenny Rogers in 2007. Real Muto waits and takes a slider in the dirt. Two and two. Seventh pitch of the at bat from Cologne to Real Muto. And there'll be an eighth. Of course, great hands on number 17 with a C. Well, it goes without saying. If only that road jersey wasn't so ugly. Oh, that script writing was just awful, wasn't it? That's back to the block letters on the road jerseys. That's the way it should be. Long turn at bat here for Real Muto. 2 2. Hit to center field. Lagara started back, now racing in, diving, and. He didn't make the catch. He did make the catch. Wow. The first base umpire said he caught it. The runners were confused because the second base umpire did not make a call. Why is the second base umpire not running out? The first base umpire, Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, signaled out. The second base umpire, Sean Barber, the rookie, was playing on the infield and did not make a call. And now let's look. He oh, caught he it. caught it. Third terrific play tonight for Lagares, who Jeez. froze going back a moment and then came racing in. I thought it skipped. What a play. Whoa, let's see, Gare. Yeah, it hit yes. the fingers of the glove and then went into the pocket. Sean Barber, the second base umpire, has got to run out there and make a call. Well, that's tremendous. Huge play for Lagares. The thing about it is, if he had trapped it, the runner at second base, Prado, had no idea. Right. And he probably could have gotten a force at third. There's Prado. Well, Prado doesn't know because who's making the call? Not the second base umpire. Because he's flat footed right there. You look the first base umpire made the call. Yes, he did. And that's the second base umpire's call. Even if he's playing on the infield. Yeah, like you that? gotta go out there. Nitro wasn't sure either, but followed Prado's lead and got back. So Lagaris, who has made a couple of stunners tonight. Picking that one up right off the top of the grass. And it's left to Echeverria with two out and two on. Echeverria's hit the ball hard twice tonight, one for two. Well, here's an overhead. Watch second base umpire. He can run out to where Murph is, straight out, get a better look. And he's afraid to make a call. He doesn't know what to do. 
And that's his call. I'm sorry. It shouldn't be the first base umpire's call. I think they got umpires afraid. Some of these young umpires are afraid to make calls. And Cologne with a letter high strike to Atreveria. Now Barber's a rookie. The second base umpire plays in the outfield when there's nobody on base. But right. the runner at first, he plays on the infield grab. But you got to run out. I mean, there's a ball down the left field line. The third base umpire's got to run out. A right field line. First base umpire's got to run out. One one. Slowly hit. Cologne off the mound. He's got it. Side retire. Big night for Lagaris in the field, and Cologne has turned in seven terrific innings one more time. It's been Lagaris all night long, taking a base hit away from Rayo Mutsu. And the Mets lead 3 1, seventh inning stretch. Nice defensive play. Everybody likes to look at his uh, physique. He can pick it. That's not an easy play. Reminds me a little of Big Daddy Rick Russell. The yes. Way big man gets off the mound. Russell was a little quicker, and but uh, Russell won a Gold Glove. But uh, that's a big play right there. Anthony Recker leads off in the home seventh inning with the Mets up three to one. Wrecker's been up twice and walked both times against David Phelps, now facing Sam Dyson. We got the final two outs in the sixth. And Danny Muno is out on deck, set to make his major league debut. There's Danny. And his parents came all the way from California to watch him tonight. And that's especially poignant for his mom, Ann, who suffered a stroke just two weeks ago. And yet made the trip from L.A. tonight to see her son play in the big leagues for the first time. Of course she would. What's that song by the Rolling Stones? Wild Horses. Strike three to Anthony. Tyson with his sinker. That's his pitch. Got to make him get it up. So now it's Muno. First big league appearance. He was in Sacramento with the Las Vegas team. Pulled out of the game last night. Flew from Sacramento to Las Vegas last night. Caught a connecting flight to New York. Much like Eric Campbell earlier in the week. And Muno who's 26 years old. In the big leagues for the first time. Muno a 
utility guy who played at Fresno State. Let's love him because he's always had a high on base percentage in the minor leagues. Interesting switch hitter, Gary. You mentioned that the natural right hand hitter. His father made him hit left handed. And then he didn't take up switch hitting until he was in college when he was having trouble hitting lefties. That's interesting that his dad would do that. Well, they love the on base percentage, and he's got a 3 0 count in his first plate appearance. Well, you know, the first 10 games of the season, we've seen Terry shorthanded with a four man bench and only one left hander on the bench. Neuenheisen, that's hurt. Three and one to Muno with Granderson on deck. Muno went to Fresno State, as we mentioned, led them to their first. College World Series title. And he lines one off the pitcher, and he'll have himself an infield hit in his first big league at bat. Welcome to the big leagues, Danny Muno. Very nice. Uh -huh. A souvenir right off the bat. Sinker down and away, right up the middle, hit him on a, almost with a right hip. Yeah, and the, they're going to take a look at Dyson after he took that shot. He's all right. Very nice. Nice hitting. So a pinch hit single from Uno, and every reason to smile. He had a very good spring with the Mets. There was some thought that he might make the ball club out of spring training. But less than two weeks into the season, he is a big leaguer, and now he's batting a thousand. Meanwhile, Dyson throwing some warm-up pitches with the trainer looking on to make sure he's okay after taking that shot off his hip, and he's all right. I would imagine that baseball's going to bomb. I still have mine. Travis Darno takes possession of it, uh -huh. pretends to throw it into the crowd, but he's got the real one in his glove. Old baseball trick. Now with Muno at first, Granderson at the plate. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Curtis is due. The other thing that they'll do with Muno, they'll present him with the ball with hacks and scribbles on it, and then they'll give him a real ball inscribed with. The facts of his first big league hit. And Dyson having some trouble throwing strikes now behind Granderson 2 0. Well, he's got to be careful here. 2 0. Nice pitch to hit for Curtis. Sunday on Jets Nation. Should the Jets trade up to draft a quarterback? Plus, will Rex Ryan add something to the Jets Bills rivalry? The crew weighs in on an all new Jets Nation Sunday at 7, only on SNY. Two and out of Granderson. And Curtis lays off and it's three and up. And Curtis hasn't been hitting, but he has been walking. And you know, last year he was a guy who loved to swing three and zero and got some good results with it. This year he hasn't been swinging three and zero. He's been taking his walks. I turn him loose here, three and zero. Eric Collins was talking about it before the game. He said, Look, last year, Granderson got here. We put him in the cleanup spot. He was expected to drive the ball, right. drive and runs. Now we've got him hitting leadoff, and he's really taken it to heart. Still, well, he'd like to mix in a few hits. Three and two to Curtis. Amazing, isn't it? He had the tremendous spring, hit well over 400. And here he is off to a sluggish start. Well, last year, remember, he didn't hit at all in April, but he also wasn't walking. He wasn't getting on base at all. He really didn't heat up until late May, early June. Muno at first and one out, three and two. And he's running, and Granderson grounding one foul. So Muno was on his way.
Terry Blevins continues to throw in the Mets bullpen. Eric Goodell is up as well. Mets now with seven relief pitchers with Montero going down today. Oh, and that one pops out of the middle of Morris, but not far enough for you know to go anywhere. Boy, Morris is uh, he's an adventure at first base. Clank. Old Ironside. What did they call Dick Stewart? Oh, Dr. Strange Glove. <laughs> there goes Muno. And the pitch, strike three called, throw to second. Is, uh, oh my, they thought it was God. ball four, and so Echeverria didn't attempt to make a tag. That is just very poor. Barstow called Granderson out on a third strike, and the Marlins must have thought it was ball four because Echeverria just no. stepped in front of the bag. Not the Marlins, the shortstop. This is just a very poor play. That is a rockhead play. <laughs> and Real Muta saying, why, why didn't you tag him? So it's a stolen base from Muno to go with his first big league hit. The Mets have a runner in scoring position wow. with two out. That is just uh, bad. Very bad, embarrassing. So now it's Lagares who had a broken bat hit and scored the go ahead run in the sixth inning, and he fouls one away. By the way, did you see the, the rock of the year from uh, Robinson Cano the other night? Uh, you told me, repeat. Mariners so had two men on, he was a third. The next hitter walked and he trotted in from third like the bases were loaded and they tagged him out. <laughs> Not good. That's uh, El Rocco. Yeah. Gotta pay attention. Well, Lagaris, one for three at the plate and an extraordinary night in the field. And tonight was presented with his gold glove, emblematic of fielding excellence from last year. Was there a Met Gold Glove winner in the house who could have presented him with the award? I believe so. Mm. Well, the guy is the first Met outfielder to win a Gold Glove since Carlos Beltran did it. Oh, there they are, Tommy Agee, of course. The late Tommy Agee. Yes. Beltran wasn't available, so. There's a gold glove first baseman here tonight. It could have helped with the ceremony. Maybe they'll wait till he gets to double digits. Maybe when he gets 11. That's very much. <laughs> Dyson ahead 0 and 2. And Lagaris hits one over the mound. Gordon waiting for it. And throws out Lagaris to end the inning. So a hit and one left. Danny Muno gets a souvenir. And we go to the eighth with the Mets up three to one.
an injury tonight, so the Nats continue to have the injuries piled up. Danny Muno with a hit and a stolen base, his first time up at the plate. Now Jerry Blevins will pitch in the eighth inning. Through two thirds of an inning last night, got the W, four pitches, makes him available tonight. Jeff Baker, the pinch hitter, and he takes it wide for ball one. Baker, the veteran, 33 years old, has done a lot of pinch hitting in his career. And remember, folks, this is a rarity for the Mets. Under the Alderson uh, regimes, three left-handers out in that bullpen. So the first time that Terry's had a had a uh, abundance of lefties. And Blevins, who's mostly been facing left-hand hitters, facing a righty here and unveiling a changeup that we haven't seen very much of. Terry's familiar, getting himself loose, ready for a possible save chance. He's had four in the last five nights. Two and one now to Baker. By the way, with Danny Muno picking up a hit and a stolen base, Mark Simon of ESPN did some research. There are now nine Mets who've had a hit and a stolen base in their major league debut. The first ever to do it was Rod Gasper, who, of course, uh, famously scored the winning run in game four of the World Series in 1969. Line to center, Ligaris with the easiest play he has tonight. One away. Lenny Dykstra did it. Keith Miller. Pat Howell, Preston Wilson, Carlos Gomez, then the most shocking name on the list, Josh Tolley. Yes, had a think? stolen base in his big league debut. Was he in the back end of something? <laughs> and before tonight, the last to do it was Wilfredo Tovar. And now Danny Muno has joined that list. A hit and a steal in their first game as a Met. That is first, uh, courtesy, major league game. That's courtesy of uh, computers, folks. It's helpful. I don't think Ralph Lindsay and and the and uh, I don't think they would have had that. Don't be putting the knock on Artie Freeman now. <laughs> Artie was, I mean, before computers, he was state of the art as far yeah. as that guy's was concerned. That's a toughie. The Murph. In those days, that was before even handheld calculators. You had to do the batting average yes. by hand, yep. long, long division. I know kids dark ages. <laughs> oh two to Gordon slap to shortstop Flores has to throw quickly and gets Gordon by half a stride for the second out. About Flores SNY super slow motion brought to you by your Mercedes Benz tri state dealers. Visit them on the web at search Mercedes dot com. Ligaris. Great catches. That's the norm. Cologne driving in a run. That's becoming the norm. Two straight games, Cologne has driven in a run. And he's given himself a chance to go 3 0 to start the season. Now, Christian Yelich, big batter here for Blevins with Stanton on deck. Of course, if Yelich can get on, Stanton would come up as the tying run, and the Mets have right handers ready. Yelich was the victim of one of Lagares's fine catches tonight, going away in deep left center back in the third. And the curveball fouled off, and Blevins ahead one and two. Boy, what a pickup Blevins has been. And you look at the Nats right now in the state of their bullpen, and you wonder what were they thinking, giving up Jerry Blevins? And I think they made a major error in judgment. I know that uh, LaRoche. Was going to command a big contract, you know, and you got dollar considerations, but they're going, they're going to miss LaRoche at first base in, in the lineup. How about Tyler Clipper? Yep. Breaking ball down two and two. And they're basically down to the one lefty in the bullpen. They called up a, a second lefty kid who hadn't been in the big leagues before, but well, they should could sure use Blevins right now. And I know he had a rough spring with them, but. Boy, he's been awfully good since he put on a Mets uniform. Clipper to me would be an untouchable. Two and two to Yelich. Past the mound, Murphy in front of it. Gets his feet organized and throws on Yelich. It's a one-two-three inning for Jerry Blevins. 
We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Mets up three to one. Take the one train down to Times Square. Change for the seven train, and yeah. you're right at City Field. She looks like she's heading out of town, though. Sunday on an all new Mets Insider from the first impressions to the overwhelming belief. Get an inside look at all the sights and sounds of opening day on Mets Insider, presented by WB Mason, Sunday at 4 30, only on SNY. Right on right hander Brian Morris on the pitch for the Marlins. Got Morris from the Pirates. Hard thrower. Off to a good start. Boy, they've been going into this bullpen. The Birds starting pitching. And I'll tell you what, they're just taxing this Marlin pen early. Lucas Duda one for three had a base hit in the Met, the middle of the Mets two run rally in the bottom of the sixth that put them in front. And he takes a strike from Morris. Well, Phelps went four and two thirds tonight. Tomorrow night, they've got Matt Latos, who they brought in thinking that he would be a, a real good second or third starter, but he has really stumbled and fallen through his first couple of starts. Duda breaks his back, flies one to left, and Yelich comes in to grab it, one away. Up tonight, Geico Sports Night. Chris Carlin will be in the chair. Islanders and Pilates. Pilates is good for you. Chris is nothing if not eclectic. I would like to watch Chris do Pilates just for a little instruction. Jerry's Familia has gotten a lot of work with the Mets in the midst of this winning streak. Took over as the closer. The Mets have won five straight games. He saved four of the five. And he'll get another chance in the ninth inning against the meat of the order. Michael Kadire drove in a run with a base hit to right his last time up. That put the Mets in front for the first time tonight. Yeah, in the ninth, it'll be Stanton, Prado, and Morris, the three big right handed bats for the Marlins. Daniel Murphy waits on deck. Taking the other way down the right field line. That's an extra base hit going to the corner. Kadire stands at second with a one out double. That second might, double of the year. Sorry, Gary. That might get Kadire going. That pitch on the outside corner has been giving him trouble. And what's the best way to get break out, and they're going to pinch run for him. Uh, no, they're not. I'm sorry. Is to drive that ball. That's beautiful hitting right there. And that might get him going. And I, I might be inclined to run for Kadire here, put New and Heiss or Mayberry, both of whom are better defenders in the game. A little more speed on the base. You have certainly well. have that option, then you're going to lose 
I'm not so sure about Mayberry. Well, it's the luxury of having the five man bench that Terry did not have until tonight. Is that you could if you wanted to. Here's Murphy who's 0 for 3. Murphy has flied out twice and grounded out. The ground out was a productive one though. It led to the third mad run. Friday night baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com today. Murph just five for 36 to start the year. Very unmurph like. Driven down the right field line. Fair ball. The Dyer in the score. Murphy heads to second. Back to back doubles. Play to run. And it's 4 to 1 New York. Slider. Not a bad pitch. Murph just turns. Very nice hitting Murph. Maybe that'll get him going. And Murph's been struggling. And you know what? When you're struggling, you're not getting hits, and you drive in a big run there. You have a good at bat. Feels good. Second double, fourth RBI of the season for Murphy. Now the Mets with a three-run lead. Eric Campbell, the batter. Campbell have the sacrifice fly in the sixth. He's also lined out and walked 0 for 1 on the night. Morris paints the outside corner nothing and one. Well the Mets are trying to secure their sixth straight win. Last time the Mets had a six game winning streak was 2011. The Mets are also trying to go to five and zero oh at home. The last time the Mets started five and zero oh at home was 2005 when they played it. Shea Stadium. Murph had ideas of stealing third. Murph, just stay there. Hmm. Fastball by Morris, one of two to Campbell. Well, if you get another run here, it gets out of a save situation, and uh, maybe you can spell Familia, give him a night off, get someone else in there to, to close it out. Spelling familiar is not the problem. Spelling Jerry's, that's a lot harder. <laughs> well, we got the wave going on now. Yeah. People have 38,000 plus on a Friday night at City Field. That was a standard back in the 80s, was it not? That and the curly shuffle. I wish they find a way to bring that. To that was shot. hilarious. Line right at the shortstop at Chavaria for the second out. Nice at bat by Campbell. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers on the web at MBUSA.com. By Stuff Up, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the New York Mets. And by City Preferred Card of the New York Mets. Now it's Wilmer Flores, is one for three on the night. Let's have a run home here in the eighth. Mets for the fourth straight game trailed early. They turned those first three of those into victories, trying to do it again tonight. Strike to Flores. By the way, you were talking about uh, traditions in the ballpark. The Mets have added a new tradition this year in the eighth inning, which I think is perfect, and the fans have really taken to it. Between the top and bottom of the eighth, they play Billy Joel's Piano Man. Yes. And the fans sing along, and that is a perfect song for this ballpark. New York guy. Guy who played the last concert at Shea Stadium. Perfect song to sing along with. So a nice call. The Long Island guy too, is he not? Mm -hmm. So perfect. Billy has uh, 
place, I believe, in Sag Harbor. I see them occasionally in the summer. Morris just got a piece. Our next SNY telecast will be Sunday afternoon, which just happens to be Matt Harvey's next start, final game of this series. Our coverage begins 12:30 Sunday afternoon right here on SNY. We'll be over on Picks 11 tomorrow night for Jacob Degrom's start. But mm -hmm. RB Day is Sunday. Morris ahead on Flores 0 and 2. And Wilmer lays off the cutter. One and two. David Phelps started for the Marlins, went four and two thirds, allowed just one hit. Grant Hand went two thirds of an inning in relief, gave up two runs, three hits. He's on the hook. Sam Dyson, an inning and two thirds, no runs, one hit. And Morris has given up a run here in the eighth. Flores grounds one toward the middle. Echeverria with the spinorama, nice. and he throws him out to end the inning. But the Mets put together back to back doubles, Kadire and Murphy, to extend their lead. Jerry's familiar will come on to try and get his fifth save in the last six days. Four to one Mets as we go to the ninth. He's familiar going for his fifth save in the last six days while he gets ready. Let's check and see what's coming up on WB Mason post game live Gary Apple and Nelson Figueroa guys. All right, guys, Metzl double switch. Kirk Neuenheis will bat ninth and play left field. And Jerry's familiar going for five saves in six days. Familiar last night worked a 1 2 3 ninth inning. Here he'll face the part of the batting order Giancarlo Stanton, Martin Prado, and Michael Morris with a three run lead. And he runs one inside to Stanton, ball one. Familiar last night on his fourth save. Really had a very, very nasty sinker, but what made it doubly nasty was his location. He really threw it at the knees and it sunk out of the strike zone. He was very wicked. Stanton in a spot where mm. even a home run can't put the Marlins even. And a good slider by Familiar fools him one and one. 
Stanton responsible for the only Miami run of this game. It came in the first inning, an opposite field home run against Cologne. And that's all Cologne gave up in seven innings of work. Good fastball. One and two. Familia is not a day at the park for a right hand hitter. One two to Stanton struck him out. Nasty slider Stanton down one down in the night. He quick pitched him there Gary didn't stop at the belt. That's that Latroy Hawkins pitch that he taught all the med relievers. Slider. Mm, right on the corner knees. Now Martin Prado two for three tonight. Ball one to Prado. Bartolo Colon went seven, a lot of run on six hits. Jerry Blevins worked a one, two, three, eighth, and Familia trying to finish off another one. Rotto looked like he went around, and he did. Mm. He's throwing hard, Garrett. Yeah, he did, sure did. He's throwing very hard. Saved three days in a row, got a day off, came back last night, looked good, and looking so sharp again tonight. One two to Prado. Mm. Fouls it away. That is some kind of nasty hard sinker. I can force the on deck batter. Place has come alive. Hasn't yeah, it? it is. There's uh, there's joy in Mudville. One, two. He struck oh. him out. Wow. Another hellacious slider from Familia. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the night. You never see Prado look this bad on two pitches in the same at bat. Just overmatched him. Look at the concentration. Well, you talked earlier tonight, Keith, about the fact that Familia, now that he has the closer's job, might not give it back. That's the way it looks. Hey, opportunity only knocks once, they say, right? Most times. Marlins down to their final lot. Michael Morris, the batter. Slider, strike one. Morris is 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for 6 in this series. Keep it going. Ichiro Suzuki would be next. Triples behind record two and two. Field base hit. Morris keeps the Marlins alive with a two out single. Well, pretty good at bat for Morris. Slider that got up, Gare. 
And they're going to pinch run for the big guy. High slider. Reed Brignac will be the pinch runner for Morris. So Brignac at first and two out. Marlins need one more base runner to get the tying run to bat. Ichiro Suzuki had a base at his last time up in the seventh inning, slapping one through the shortstop hole. Ichiro one for three tonight. Duda will play behind Brignac at first. And Ichiro slaps one back to Familia. And the ball game is over. For the first time since 2011, the Mets have won six in a row. Familia saved five of the six. Bartolo Colon gets his third win and a big RBI to boot. And the Mets are eight and three on the year and roll it. Well, that young man right there coming in from center field made three fine plays in the outfield. Uh, one on a play coming in. Runners on first and second base. But Garris, I'm talking about. Rudy flashed the goal in front of this big, big crowd. And everything's going the Mets' way right now. They're just doing everything right. They're getting the clutch hits. They're moving the runners. They're playing good defense. And that's making that skipper very happy right there. And this is something the Mets had to do, Gary. Get off to a good start. And they have. And how about Bartolo Colon? 41 years old. Three starts. Three wins. He allowed just one run over seven innings today. Waited for the Mets to get their offense rolling. They didn't get a hit the first four innings. They got enough runs. Cologne got the tying run home with a sack fly. They scored two in the sixth. Danny Muno later on got his first big league hit and stolen base. So a big day for him. Game summary presented by Jeep. Six straight wins for the Mets. It's been four years since they've done that. Five and zero oh at home. It's been ten years. Since they've done that, Mets win four to one. We send it downstairs to Steve Gelb. Steve, thanks, Gary. Here with Michael Kadir had the go-ahead RBI in the sixth inning. Michael, we talked about it last night. Playing small ball, making the right baseball plays. You've now won six in a row, five at home in front of these fans. Doing just that again tonight. It's, it's exciting. Um, the way these guys were lighting up this stadium here at the end was uh, was a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully we can keep it going. What you expected when you signed up? We, we hoped for it. There's no question. And uh, fortunately, we've been playing well the last couple games, and everybody out here has responded really well. In the sixth inning, that at bat with Lagaris on third base, what's your approach trying to get him in? You're just trying to get him in. You're not trying to do too much. You don't want to get away from yourself. You know, you, you try and go up to the plate with a job, and you do the best you can to execute. Fortunately, I was able to roll it, uh, roll it underneath the Morse's glove there at first base. I can't tell who's more fired up when Bartolo Colon gets an RBI, these fans or the dugout. How, how do you not get fired up when you watch that guy? He's like the big teddy bear. You just want to go give him a hug, especially when he knocks in a run. So it was another good at bat for him. First pitch, jumped on it, and was able to get the run in. Michael, congrats. Thanks. Thank you. Gary? Cologne hadn't had an RBI in 10 years till he picked up one Sunday in Atlanta. Now he's driven and runs in back-to-back -back starts. For every Mets win, the Mets Foundation is proud to contribute $2,500 to the Cats Women's Hospital and the Cats Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthShoreLIJ.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $20,000. Half a dozen in a row for the Mets. Lagaris got his gold glove before the game today and put in his bid for a new one with his play tonight. Mets win it 4-1. We'll come back with more from City Field in just a moment.